I am Andrew Ward. Um, I'm with Comparian Insurance Agency, uh, which is a Liberty Mutual company. We do everything from, like I said, life, home, auto, renters, anything above uh, all the toys as well. Even when you're doing, you know, you're shopping for home insurance, you know, we can, we can insure pretty much anything you got. So, and one of the nice things with us being an agency is the whole being able to shop somebody's quote um, is something that we're in a very unique position. We're not a, what they call a captive agent. Some com uh, insurance companies are like I said, are, they're standalone, so they can only quote their product. Whereas I have 18 to 20 different carriers. Funny enough, just got a brand new for homeowners, um, Universal Property and Casualty. I'm going to drop that name because I'm going to tell you what, we've been using them in Iowa now for maybe a year. They've been in Iowa. Uh, we just got them for our agency and they are destroying all of the other quotes that we've had, like so far, the three I ran were legitimately close to a thousand dollars less for the yearly premium on the home quote than some of the other ones I was doing, even good numbers from my other carriers. So they are definitely one that is going to be a very, very good resource right now as a brand new carrier because they are very interested in the state of Iowa. So we've heard and we've seen now the cost of insurance has jumped drastically. Now I've heard rumors on the internet about why that might be, but I want to, would you share your expertise on what's happening there? Absolutely. And and it really is a, a combination of a lot of things. Um, and I mean, unfortunately people have noticed over the last few years, and this is where you're seeing kind of what has been a constant increase um, is nonstop catastrophic storms. Um, and that's where insurance companies sometimes run into problems as they're very aggressive getting into certain areas and they try to keep rates as low as possible. What happens then though is they get into a run of two or three years and especially in like states like Iowa and Nebraska, you know, after what we just saw already this, you know, early this spring, um, they get into situations where like their losses are so ridic ridiculously catastrophic that it affects everyone. And like when it comes down to it where home and auto are two totally different aspects there. Like when you do an auto rate, like that's you, it's your driving record, your credit, your stuff. When it comes to homeowners, it probably has more to do, I would say with the area you live in, the condition your house is in than anything else. Um, and that's one of the big things when it comes to insurance, your roof, home insurance, the roof is the biggest problem. Um, and that's where like, if you have an older roof or a roof that is not in that great of a shape, like I'm gonna tell you right now, your rates are gonna be higher. If you have a roof that is inside 10 years, you're getting a way better rate. And if you have a relatively new year in, or new roof inside five years, yeah, like you're getting really, really good, really competitive rates from everybody because they see that roof age and like that's instantly, they're, they're interested. I'm like, okay, yeah, no, you got a good roof, it's a good condition, almost new. Like we're definitely, you know, willing to, to look at this. Um, but I think that's the biggest part is unfortunately is the, the amount and then severity of all of the storms that we have had in these last few recent years has definitely drove that increase. Now, on the other side of that, um, unfortunately, the housing market on your side, I believe, is still kind of going, um, but we are definitely seeing a lot of relaxation and a lot of them opening back up as far, and by opening back up, I don't mean like they weren't taking rates, but they're opening back up where they're laxing on some of that a lot more. Um, and some of them have actually taken kind of countermeasures where you can always kind of adjust your deductibles when it comes to your home, you know, anywhere from a thousand to, you know, whatever you're comfortable with when it really comes down to it. Um, but anymore, most of them, you used to be able to do that with wind and hail. Um, the, in this area now, because of 90% of the cat claims, things that happen are hail and wind related in our area. So that's one of the things where most carriers have already just kind of redone that themselves to where it's it's a minimum either a one percent which that one percent factors off of your what your actual dwelling a coverage is so your actual value of what's going to be replaced so say you have a three hundred and fifty thousand dollar home that's what we're covering it would be thirty five hundred dollars if it was a wind hail um otherwise you can a lot of them you can actually start it at twenty five hundred or pick the one percent and that's where sometimes you want to take a look at you know where the customer's at on what might work better for them, um, whether the one percent's a little lower or the twenty five hundred ends up being a little lower, um, but that's one thing carriers have done to try to help. Which obviously, like most people know, you know, the higher that deductible goes, obviously that's you taking more of more of the financial end of that that loss. So obviously, the lower your premiums will go with that. So.
I want to see if you can clarify something. You know, avoid misinformation. I don't know if this is a conspiracy theory, but I've heard that <laughs> a lot of carriers are pulling out of Florida specifically because of flood related things. Is that affecting rates in Iowa? Okay, so no. Um, like you're when they're in a different state, those kind of things are not going to affect you. Um, but the big thing with some of those carriers are is they're probably not just taking the losses in Florida. They're taking them other states as well. Um, I, I know probably all but a couple of my carriers, like they're they're in 30 plus states, you know. So when they pull out of, I mean, just like we know California, 75% of the insurance companies pulled out of California. Like we don't want anything to do with all those fires and flooding and all that stuff. Really? So it's like, it's very hard in California, but same with Florida. Um, and they're one of those ones where you, yeah, you have... One, especially during those those hurricane seasons, man, they have bad seasons of that. And before you know it, like those companies just take such drastic losses that they just don't have a choice. And I mean, that's where, you know, as a business, they're a business as well, right? It's like your, your whole point's always to be profitable. The problem is, is sometimes they get into a situation with certain states trying to be aggressive at getting clients and good quality clients. Um, it just gets to a point where it's like, without charging someone three times what they should be you know, paying, and that's where they elect to pull out of a state, opposed to try to charge somebody, you know, nine grand instead of three, you know, when they know that that's just not right. Um, the insurance division also has a large say in that. Um, these carriers, even with their drastic, you know, rate increases that you do see, I will be 100% honest with you and tell you that probably all of them asked for twice that increase. Um, but the insurance division will not allow it. Like they will cap it at a certain amount, no matter what. Um, but they always look at, you know, and they're kind of our checks and balances, you know, as far as the carriers to make sure that, yeah, we're not trying to price gouge or, you know, whatever. And I shouldn't say we, no, that's not me, but like sh that these carriers aren't trying to price gouge people like that. So like they can, they can increase sometimes, but it does have to be approved before that can even happen. Like they're going to have to show very meticulous documentation that like, okay, we lost this many millions of dollars this quarter. Like we have to take a 5% increase to try to level out our books. And that's where if it gets accepted, it gets accepted. They may ask for 20 and only get five, you know, they may ask for 30 and only get 10. And so that's where they come in to regulate, to make sure that like, those states that are getting inc insane like that. And then it's up to the carrier, like you're saying, where they're wanting to pull out, it's up to them going, okay, well, 5% increase isn't enough. Like we're still going to lose money hand over fist. So that's where that one kind of boils down is like they pull out and it's just because they have to try to protect themselves as a business as well. And then they're also, like I said, on the other side of it, trying to not just ridiculously rip people off basically. And they just decide, hey, Let's not try to offer something to somebody we know isn't going to work for them. So what do you do? Like if you're a homeowner and you get a letter that says, hey, we're no longer insuring you or your new rate is this and it's ridiculous. How can you help those people? And that's when you, yeah, that's definitely when you call me. My QR code helps. Um, one of those things that I always say is like you can get onto my, to my site from my QR code. And I mean my site. Um, you can leave me a Google review. Um, there's one new thing that we have, and I mentioned this to you a while back, the Canopy Connect, where it's, you can basically just directly, and I believe you did, you just directly upload it to it. it. It legitimately takes you a minute. It'll send me your current coverage pages, and that helps us. Okay, so this is what you have as far as coverage levels. This is what you're looking to protect. Okay, and, and then I can talk to the customer like, okay, are these things important to you? Would you like increases here? And then I can shop it. Is, is where I'm becoming the value, right? I'm not the, just that one carrier that they just lost that's pulling out of that state. I should hopefully have double digit other options or at least a handful for them um, that are gonna be way better you know, pricing than that. And Universal is actually one of those, again, I don't know why I keep, they're just, they've been so awesome lately. Um, they're from Florida. And that's one of the things I think that really interest, uh, interested us in them is that's where they originated is Florida. And like we were just talking about carriers wanting to pull out of that state, right? The, the amount of severe catastrophic hurricanes, tropical storms they get, it's a very hard place to write business. Um, but not only did they, they were thriving. And I mean, you know, not doing it by charging people three times what they should be by doing it the right way, underwriting the correct risks right out of the gates so that you know where you're at. And that's how they stay profitable. And that's how they've been able to basically move from Florida up the entire East Coast. And then now they've started moving, you know, moving west across the Midwest. So Minnesota and us and Iowa now have, 
have gotten the the joy of getting to work with them. They're, they are great people to work with. So. What states are you licensed in and what states can you help people in? So at the moment, that is actually a very tricky situation. Um, because not only are rates going up for homeowners, obviously, as things you've seen, but like that is also part of probably the trickiest area of time we've been in as insurance agents is trying to have those options. And it has been very difficult to place people. Um, and a lot of it is, is, you know, certain carriers are just as it, they're trying to keep the amount of claims to keep profitability. And once somebody gets to, a, you know, two or three claims, it gets really hard to place them. Um, and then you just have to, like I said, you got to try your best to see if you can find somebody that fits or maybe work around a couple of things that they do or don't want to necessarily have, that then you can find them a good placement. Can you expand a little bit on that? So having multiple claims obviously makes it makes your insurance more expensive, but it could make it more difficult to find adequate yes. insurance. Yes. And especially like, so your, your hard windows you want to look at are three and five years, right? So inside three years, if you have more than a couple of claims inside those three years. Now, one thing that people need to remember is like those storms that are classified catastrophe storms, you know, we call them cat, you know, cat classification, which those storms, you know, like duratio, things like that, that are so severe for an entire area, like there's a reprieve, those things just don't count. Like they're going to show up on your insurance, but like you'll notice in the things I see, like there's zero point, like it's a zero violation point. It's not going to affect your actual true risk score in any way, shape or form. And that's done by the insurance division. Like it's just not allowed a storm like that. Like you can't do anything about acts of God when it comes to those things. Like it, it just is what it is. So they, that is one thing where they're very good about making sure those don't show up. Um, the other claims obviously is where it's at, you know, all of a sudden you have some water damage and then the year after that, you know, you have an, another minor damage that's like not related to storms, not related to what it is. And that's where they start getting into a situation where all of a sudden the amount of multiple claims inside such a small window gets to be a problem. Um, you get three claims inside of a, a three to five year window, like it's going to be rough to find at least reasonable coverage. Like if, I'm not saying the the options won't be there. They just aren't going to be in the price range. Probably either of us will be hoping. <laughs> and, and that makes sense. You know, if you're a high risk homeowner, you're going to have to pay adequately, right? Yeah, right. Um, and I mean, you, you probably a little, little bit know that a little bit too going in. Can you touch a little bit on on condo policies and what you're seeing changes there? I'm not seeing a lot of, of change there. Um, when it comes to the condos, like the nice part there is, is most of them, you're part of some sort of an HOA, which a lot of it, that helps a lot. Um, one big thing I would say to anybody trying to do a condo, please get your hands on the master policy from your HOA. Um, it's very helpful to us agents to be able to make sure we know what is actually covered by that that you're paying and then what we need to make sure we're covering. Uh, but condo, as far as condo, like it just doesn't seem to be the same kind of movement when it comes to changing you know as far as a homeowner's policy does i mean even though a condo you're still a homeowner as far as i'm concerned um just a little bit different i think because of the hoa protection on top of your protection it just isn't quite as big of a risk to them renters i mean like it, it's kind of always the same um i mean that is really is going to determine on the location of your rental for one um and then how big the place is and what you really want um, to cover. Mm -hmm. When it comes to your renter, renter's policy, you're looking at your personal property. And what I always tell people, take your house, shake it upside down, right? All the stuff that falls out, you know, that's not connected inside the place, all the stuff that falls out, that's all the stuff you want to make sure you're adequately covered for. Here's a random question. What if you don't pay rent? Can you still get a renter's policy? Yes, of course. Like if you live what, and what with do you, what do you mean, or... like? Yeah, like say you live with, yeah, say you live with a, a parent, right? but don't want like their homeowner's insurance or something, right? Cause it's like your insurance, a lot of those will extend to like car and you know, inside your car, if something's stolen, things to that matter. Like I would always suggest to do it because the bottom line is, is they're not asking you what you're paying for rent. It's just asking you where you live and then what okay. you're looking like, as far as your actual number, like I said, whether you're $20,000 in personal property, $50,000 in personal property. So, and that's in there, they're relatively inexpensive. I mean, my renter's policy, I believe I have a, if I'm not mistaken, 50 K um, I'd have to pull it up to know for sure. But like I pay like $17 a month, $18 a month, you know, for $50,000, you know, it has an accidental, you know, death clause and different things on it. So it's like, they're super inexpensive. I would always suggest it because what people don't understand is in the event of that kind of a tragedy and something happens, a fire happens, whatever it may be. I mean, it may be your neighbor below you, you know, I mean, that this, that causes this, not even you, but I mean, I guarantee you, you are not going to want to have to deal with 
now I have to replace all of this stuff in my place out of my pocket. Mm -hmm. And when you could have been paying, yeah, 18, 20, 25 bucks, probably tops a month to cover all of that stuff. So this is kind of a random question, but is there a specific writer um, or something for like art collections? Those are, those are unique. Um, a lot of, and like, do you mean the business side of it or do you mean like personal? Because if there's, uh, if you're talking personal, like, are you talking like, are you collect art? I know you enjoy art. So, I mean, you may have a handful of pieces is maybe what you're referring to, right? So we'll use you, okay? Mm -hmm. You have your own home, you live in your own home. What I would do is I would schedule personal property on your plan, whether it's a renter's or a homeowner's. We can schedule it and normally each item can go depending on what it is, right? Firearms are a certain height. Um, arts and like antiquities are gonna be a certain like max amount. But normally if you schedule a property, you can schedule it up to like, $25,000 like per like on those specific items right like we're not gonna cap your you know your jewelry at $2,500 you know when you when you bought your wife a $15,000 ring mm -hmm. that doesn't seem right you right $2,500 to replace my $15,000 ring doesn't doesn't seem like something that sounds good to me so that's one thing yeah if you have expensive items really expensive items and that's those are it like I said firearms you know collectibles fine arts special jewelry ask about scheduling that item and like normally all you'll need once it gets past like ten thousand dollars you might need an appraisal within the last couple of years but if somebody has something of that value i'm gonna bet they have an appraisal so andrew you're our local insurance expert how can people get in touch with you if they need anything my qr codes behind me um they can scan that and get anything they need they can go straight into shooting a quote to me um like i said one thing i always like is is being able to get their current coverage pages or previous coverage pages, just because comparing apples to apples is always better than, you know, someone saying, you know, you telling me, you, yeah, yeah, I pay around $1,200. And then I see your coverage page. It's like, no, you actually, you pay about 1600, you know? So now we're actually looking at the correct number. And a lot of times people don't know exact coverages, you know, what their dwelling numbers at, how much personal property they have, what are their medical payments at if someone gets hurt on their property, what your actual liability numbers are. A lot of people don't know that. And I don't blame them. I don't want to know that stuff. You know, I'm an insurance agency. The only reason I do know those things, but like, that's not stuff I want to pay attention to. So it's, I mean, it's one of those things where it's always nice to have that just to be able to, like I said, compare apples to apples. My, you can get me at any email, andrew.ward at libertymutual.com. Um, my direct cell phone number, if people ever want to just call me, text me. Um, so long as I'm, I'm around, I will answer or I will respond as quickly as I can. Um, and that number is 563 nine four zero nine six five six andrew thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today about insurance uh, absolutely appreciate it yep not a problem man absolutely appreciate you having me on